Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Matthew Granahan. What's up? Hey. King What's of happening? Connecticut. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, how was your Christmas, Stacks? It was great. I had a really good Christmas, man. My family, we were all hanging out. It was uh, pretty chill. Got the toy drive done. A lot of good things. Yeah, you're doing doing great work. You know, I Thanks. saw that. You know, me and, me and my dad used to help out a lot in Connecticut with uh, Hungry. We used to do Hunters for the Hungry. So when we would um, donate a lot of venison and uh, wild turkey, and, and I mean, we shot everything, pigeons, like everything when we, we would always uh, donate in uh, Bridgeport. And then later on when I was in college, I worked for the Knights of Columbus uh, drive, the food drive. So it's great to help. help I'm out. in the Knights and of Columbus. I'm a, I'm a knight. Awesome. Yeah, that's great organization. Very, very great, great uh, organization, which a lot of people don't realize is. It's out from Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, you're from uh, Nor Norwalk, right? I'm from Connecticut, but a lot of people don't realize that everybody knows I'm from Connecticut. I'm the king of Connecticut. But yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people don't realize that the Knights um, are actually were founded in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah hey, did you hear, about, you hear about that zombie deer disease going around? No. What's that all about? Yeah, I guess... Uh, it, a bunch of deer have been tested positive for this zombie deer uh, disease. And I guess it, it can spread to humans and, and it's a lot of people are on edge because of it. Yeah. So I didn't know, you know, deer. down here in Florida, I don't um, deer hunt as much, although I'm going to, I guess I got some deer on property. I did bird hunted um, the, this past fall. Uh, and uh, wild turkey hunted, but I had haven't deer hunted since I since I moved to Florida a couple of years ago. So I have a lot of deer down there. A lot of deer down there. The deer in Florida are smaller. This part of Florida, they're a little bigger. But see, I'm not a trophy hunter when it comes to deer. I like a nice, smaller, mid-sized deer that's tender meat. You know, um, although I have shot some bigger buck and and mounted them, that's not really my thing. I I don't wait for the big buck. I like to shoot a, a nice uh, table ready deer. You know, uh, I love that backstrap meat especially, but I love to make venison chili too with deer. I make it with goat cheese. It's, 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 uh, it's really good, man. People should check out my book, Cooking with the King. And I've got my eat cookbook that's been out for six years now on uh, the Amazon Kindle store. And I got some venison recipes in there. I've actually got my uh, my uh, backstrap recipe for deer, and I also have the venison chili with the goat cheese. But for Christmas, yeah, we I had a great Christmas too. When Christmas with family is great, and we pig out, um, we we celebrate more Christmas Eve is a big um, celebration. We had so many great seafood dishes. I had um, mussel marinara. Um, stuffed crabs, oyster shooters. We had shrimp cocktail. We had uh, linguine with uh, lobster tail and scallops and crab meat and uh, little little baby neck clams. So we picked out. But then on Christmas Day, I actually um I did have deer meat because I had a, a friend down here from the gym that gave me some uh, venison tenderloin and I put. Uh, goat cheese on it. I sear it on both sides real fast and then baked it for 12 minutes. So it's, it's, it's like rare to medium rare. And then put that goat, that goat cheese was smothered on top. And oh man, we loved it. It's, it's yeah, they say if you marinate um, like steak inside milk, I guess yeah. it's really, it makes it really good. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Soaking in milk is, is good. Soaking in buttermilk. Yeah, I yeah. keep hearing that. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, that, do you like to cook, Stacks? Yeah, man, I love cooking. Yeah, just, me a too. just a hobby type thing, you know. Me too. I'll, I'll send you some. I'll send you some recipes. What I'll do is I'll actually send you some videos. I'll send you one with uh, Jenny Santana, 
uh, world jiu-jitsu, Gracie jiu-jitsu champion, Tito Santana's uh, daughter and her, be her beautiful daughter. When I had them in the studio at Berman and I cooked for them. Uh, and then I'll send you one with Renee Michelle from WWE, the mistress of wrestling that went me down at the studio. I, I, I cooked for some of the guests that come on in the studio at the law firm. Uh, and those two are really entertaining videos and those are good recipes. And I show the breakdown of how I make, make the different meals. Uh, yeah, I'll put, I'll put a link for your cookbook in the description of this video if anyone wants to check it out. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll send you the link it's called Cooking with the King. Yeah, I man, I, I love it. I could probably I find it. That's my favorite thing to do for, for family and uh, family and friends is to cook. You know, yeah, uh, they say, I, uh, bring people together. That's what they yeah. say. Yeah, I'm having some scotch now, so, you know. I like to sip on my cocktails, but I like to stay off the road and keep it safe or take an Uber if I'm having any cocktails. So I love to cook at home. That's, you know, I had all yeah, this I, I haven't drank in over five years, man. Yeah, you were saying that. You, you, were, you were saying that. You know, I was over at Larry's house uh, a week or so ago, Larry Motz's house, and I brought him a bottle of this uh, Chivas Regal, the 13-year age. I'm drinking it 12-year age now. And I like to sip on those scotches. I don't drink um, a lot like I used to, but I like to. I like to have a few cocktails to mellow out. Oh, uh, but I, you got to be careful on the roads, man. And one of the things I do with the law firm in in running cases is DUI cases, and a lot yeah. of people destroy their lives with DUIs. It's sad, man. Yeah. One DUI could really. Uh, it'll cost you what ten grand. About ten grand. Yep, costs about ten grand. We always advise people not to blow because we can get it dropped to reckless driving for your first one in some counties down here. But it's a hassle and it's expensive. And look at Sonny. You know, I did some videos with Hannibal with Sonny, a past love of mine, uh, Sonny from WWF, the old WWF. You know, she she was a really nice person and uh, I think had some. Had some mental issues, but she's uh, she's going to spend pretty much the rest of her life in prison now. From what? Uh, you know, what's yeah, what she do? Uh, she had two previous DUIs, and then she had one right down here in Florida, only about twenty five miles from me, and uh, the guy died. So it's pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel bad for her, and, and it's an accident, but. You know, that was like Hogan's son just got a DUI recently, right? Yeah, and you know, his friend um, was really messed up from uh, mm -hmm. the, the one he had years ago. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's terrible. I'm a believer in, 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 in really that if someone is arrested, it shouldn't be publicized because you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But, I mean, I have my whole, my whole reform. I think recidivism is, uh, and we'll get into the whole topic about uh, the war machine and the war racket, but it's also the prison industrial complex. And I think that uh, the powers that be, they want to keep people behind bars because it's big money. There's big business in it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad because I, I, it, when people get out, I think once you paid your debt to society, that should be wiped off of your record. I mean, unless you're maybe if you're a child molester or something, but generally speaking, you paid your debts to society. You shouldn't lose your second amendment, right? You know, I'm a big gun guy. I don't believe in people losing their, their second amendment, right? Especially someone who, who's fresh out of prison because most of the time they're going to have to live in an area where they're going to need a gun to protect themselves more than, more than the average person. But yeah. I, I also think that it's, the whole idea of background checks and companies not hiring people uh, is horrible too. I think that they should go back to um, what they did years ago in the prisons and, uh, and teach trades and teach people to get jobs, have a jobs program for when they get out. I mean, that's all kind of part of what the topic is about tonight because I don't think that our government really cares about the people, cares about us. Um, 
and they've sold us out to to foreign governments years ago. You know, wild. And what's the going on is wild. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is, man. And yeah, so if you want to get into it, the, the topic I wanted to talk about. You have such a great show. You had the natural Randy Couture on, uh, who was really the face of MMA for years. You had my good buddy, UFC Hall of Famer, Pat Militant John, a uh, great friend of mine and really a legend in MMA as a fighter and as a broadcaster and as a coach, right? Yeah. Uh, but also brilliant mind, uh, very smart guy. You had uh, Jason Reinhardt on, who's a great guy, UFC veteran, all these guys from UFC. And then the mob world, right, which is kind of the thrust of your show, you know? I know a yeah. lot of guys from the life, and I and I really was kind of adverse to talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's such a big genre now, right? Well, but when you look at that genre and you look at the rackets, like whether it be um, shy locking, uh, whether it be bookmaking, whether it be drug dealing, uh, and you look at any of the street rackets. And they're a drop in the bucket. They pale in comparison to the war racket. The, the largest, the most powerful racket of all is the war racket. And the true gangsters of the world are the Zelenskys and the Netanyahu's. And I think in order to have a discussion about the war racket, we have to start at the beginning. And when I say start at the beginning, look at our forefathers. And I have a couple of quotes for you here. Our forefathers, they, they cherished our sovereignty after we won the revolution and our independence from Great Britain. And they were non-interventionists. They wanted to avoid foreign entanglements completely. They, they feared standing armies quote from Thomas Jefferson here, uh, peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. Now compare that quote with the world today. Compare that quote with our relationship with a, a, a nefarious Middle Eastern country, Israel, where we give them billions of dollars every year. And they take that money and they use it to buy weapons from American arms manufacturers. They use it to create Hamas. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand uh, how it works. I mean, I was watching Jimmy Dore last night. He had Alex Jones on and Alex Jones was saying how he, he admired the chutzpah of Israel and Netanyahu to actually come out and say we will fund and create our enemy to make sure we don't have peace in the region so that we can keep war going and keep war advancing. You know, and then more money, it's more money. The more they keep going, the more money yeah. people are making off of it because of the, the pipelines, the, the food, the bombs, the all of it. It's all money. Yeah. And, and, and I think you're, you're I don't know how uh, in depth your listeners are with respect to to geopolitical matters, but the way that it works in Israel with Netanyahu, and I'll, we'll go back and we'll, we'll look at the, how Israel was even created, is uh, they did not do not want peace, and they actually funded and created Hamas to oppose the PLO so that the Arab world and the and the Palestinians look more violent so they could keep the war machine going because they don't get those billions if there's peace. And yeah. at the same time, as they continue to take the land from the Palestinians, build these settlements and 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 openly kill people. And Israel has had a policy for um, several decades, which is called mow the lawn where they pe periodically go into Gaza and they kill people to keep them in line. 
take their whole neighborhood over, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, what's going on now is they completely wiped out half of Gaza. Yeah. It just it's which is completely insane. But before that, they were they were they were mowing the lawn just to keep it keep it going. And I really think that the October seventh was likely a false flag because it gave uh, it gave Netanyahu the chutzpah to go out and have this genocide, this mass murder. But none of that stuff happened in a vacuum, though. Uh, stats. If we go back in time, and you know, I, I'll give you one other quote from George Washington. It is our true policy to steer clear of any permanent alliances with any portion of the free world, which is crazy because now we have bases in countries most people can't even pronounce. Yeah. It's insane. Um, we're getting attacked too, left and right, man. There's been over a hundred attacks on U.S. troops on foreign soil. This is and how I like, this, this is how I explain it to people. Stacks and uh, I it, it, I put it in like what I call a dude speak. I'll relight my cigar and then I'll tell you how yeah. I how I explain this. My cigars went out. These were a gift. These are Connecticut cigars, Dolce Vita. They're from Thompson Cigars in Connecticut. Are they good? What what what, st what um town are they from? Uh, Thompson, I think it's called Thompson, Thompson Cigars. Yeah, I got I got. I know, a I know where Thomaston is. <laughs> well, there's Thomaston, and then there's Thompson, and Thompson, Connecticut, is up near the Rhode Island border. Um, oh yeah, I do know where it is. It's it's pretty close to the casinos. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, you were talking about the beginning, how Israel got started, how how it even came to be before all this yeah, started. Yeah. Yeah. Saying saying when we go we go back in time, uh, just prior to uh, World War One. Right. And I, I mentioned uh, Washington and Jefferson and their famous quotes and uh, how America was founded on avoiding foreign entanglements. And then you compare that to you say, how do we get here where we're the only country with these bases all over the world? And, and what I wanted to say in that regard is I, the dude speak. How I put this in dude speak is let's just say that me and you uh, are hanging out and we're going to a local watering hole in Bristol, Connecticut, right? Yeah. And we're hanging out. We're checking out the ladies, right? Mm -hmm. And these Jeeps pull up, right? And these French dudes get out all in fatigues and they come into the bar very arrogant they start they start hitting on all of our chicks and they act like they own the place yeah and we would look at them as what like who are these assholes they're occupiers yeah. and that's the way that the rest of the world looks at the united states because we have these bases all over the world. We try to control what everyone else does. No one else does that. China has one and a half bases all over the world. We have bases in countries Americans can't even pronounce. So Yeah, we're the we're the world police, man. Like, yeah, so we, we exactly. police the world. And you want to ask like how did we get there, right? So I told you uh, Washington and Jefferson. Well, prior to World War 1, but World War I should have never been a world war. It was a European conflict between, yeah. largely between Great Britain and Germany, right? Mm -hmm. And Germany had it almost won, had the war nearly won. And the United States had no interest whatsoever in getting involved. But uh, Lord Balfour and uh, Great Britain 
he got together with Baron Rothschild. He reached out to Baron Rothschild and um, he created something called the Balfour Do Declaration. And Zionism, which began in the early 1900s, um, already had a lot of influence on American politicians. So basically, you've heard of the Rothschild family, right? I don't know how deep yeah. you go. So Baron Rothschild uh, what knew that he could get the polls to drag the U.S. and U.S. politicians in, drag us into World War I inside of Great Britain. So the Balfour Declaration was what created the state of Israel. But the Palestinians were already living there. And there was double dealing on the part of the British to promise that land to uh, the Arabs as well. So it was British double dealing where it started, but it dragged us into World War I. It, it be, that European conflict became a world war. There were tons more deaths that didn't need to happen, but it was, it was all a racket and it was all big money with the Rothschild family and uh, and Lord Balfour. So the state of Israel there, you just say, you put it on there, the state of Israel is born, right? So we're enamored in this, we're, we're embroiled rather in this World War I. So many American lives are lost. All this American money is spent. And then we were flipping from being a sovereign nation that minds our own business and protects ourselves to becoming embroiled all over the world. And then that leads to the, the Treaty of Versailles after World War is oh, World War One is over, right? Which decimates Germany's economy and creates a World War One war hero, very loud, brash, and becomes a very dangerous man. Who am I talking about? Adolf Hitler. So that sows the seeds for World War II. And there's a great book by Pat Buchanan called The Unnecessary War, where he talks about how the U.S. should have stayed out of World War II too, as well because of all the deaths we had. And he, he makes the case about Churchill wrangling us into that war. But there's the great book by five-star General Smedley Butler, War is a Racket. And it's the most lucrative racket in the entire world. Yeah. The the more the more the war continues, the more money that they're gonna make because they need to produce these weapons, they need to be able to um, fund it. So we're dumping money, and these guys are just making the money, and we're yeah. losing because we're getting blamed for all of it, basically, right? Yeah. And the real losers in all of this are the American people. We surrendered our sovereignty. So our politicians are no longer beholden to the American people. Um, we, I mean, a country as wealthy as ours could have the very best health care system. We shouldn't have homelessness. All of these problems that I talked about, the prison industrial complex, we shouldn't have all these people in prison. We're such a wealthy nation but we've become the bitch of Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the rest of the world. I mean, this, this ridiculous war uh, in Ukraine. I mean, NATO is such a great example. We want to force Ukraine into NATO because then they have to spend a certain percentage of their GDP. And they actually, they actually more than tripled that percentage with this Ukraine war on buying weapons from us, from the United States arms manufacturers. So it all yep. comes down to money, man. But the losers in this stats are the American people. Yeah, but because so the, the our, our debt, right, the American debt, it was at a certain point, and they needed, like, funding like they have a they have a budget that they have to go by for different cities you know for law enforcement this and that they said that they didn't have enough money for the debt and then all of a sudden they got 900 million or, or billion dollars more than what their budget was supposed to be 
So that's money laundering at its finest, man. Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. You know, we're broke as a nation. And uh, every politician, with the exception of one or two, is a lapdog of Israel because of the APAC and the Israeli lobby. And we just give $15 billion to Israel. Here's another $15 billion. They all voted for it. And there's a great saying, Stax, that if you want to know who rules over you, who controls you, just figure out who you cannot criticize. And they're trying to censor Americans now in criticizing Israel or siding with the, the Palestinians. The Palestinian people, I mean, that none of this happened in a vacuum. I mean, they've been in an open-air prison for decades. Um, they, the Israel's had that policy of mowing the lawn. What do you think happens when you see, if you're a guy like us, and you see your mother or your sister or your daughter get killed, you become a terrorist. You, you did, that doesn't breed successful people. That breed, that's how you create terrorists. So they hatred. wanted you get to. Hatred. Yeah. So you hate these Absolutely. people. It killed your whole family. What are you going to do, right? Absolutely. You know, there's a, great, there's a great quote that terror is the poor man's war. And war is the poor man's terror. And uh, it's so true. You know, Israel has all the power in this. And they're doing it with our money. It's, it's disgusting enough that we send our money all over the world. But to see a genocide done with our money, it just, it sickens me. And it should sicken every thinking American. There's so many distractions, right? And yeah. That's Americans are all distracted by goofy stuff on TikTok or uh, or this or that, but people don't focus on uh, the real war racket. And, and you know, to a certain degree, with me, man, you reach a certain point where you just say, "Look, this is not going to change." Uh, but you know, I want to at least educate people on what's going on. And, and because you have a, a a show about gangsters and about crime. I want to point out who the true gangsters and criminals are and what the biggest racket in, in the world is and has been for, for decades, for hundreds of years. What about our border? With all these uh, young men, military age men, pouring into our border. Here, let me show you a picture so you guys can get a context of what's really going on at our border. Because these people will be at your doorstep eventually. Oh, absolutely. It's crazy. This and, and I is can, our border. And I can guarantee you this, man. I can guarantee you this. <laughs> all those angry young men, it, it, all those angry Palestinians that have been in, kept in an open-air prison for decades and have seen their family members gunned down they're going to be refugees now, and they sure as hell aren't going to go to Israel. Israel is not going to take them. They want to move those people here to the United States. I mean, that's all part of the game, man. And the American people, at the end of the day, are the ones that get shit on. And like, it, you know, I don't think we, we don't have the resources to take care of all these people. Absolutely we don't. not. New Absolutely York's starting not. to crumble over over the, the weight of all these people coming in. Have you been to the city lately? New York City? Yeah, I, I managed a campaign, I was telling you, for a real scumbag that was running for councilman up there, and uh, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I flew up there, and I left in a day because I, I couldn't stand it. Yeah, it's crazy. There's people yeah. everywhere. Like, it, it's insane. It's awful, and you know, in America, we have serious problems. I mean, I'm a father. Uh, my daughter's in her early 20s, and the average cost of a home in America has, went for, has gone from 215000 to 450000 These big corporations, these scumbags, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, they want to turn us into a society where there's no more homeownership. And yeah. Um, it's disgusting. And that and the politicians aren't even talking about that. I mean, Bobby Kennedy talks about it, but I think they should be banned. These mega corporations should be banned 
from buying any land or, or homes in residential areas. That would solve the problem, but they don't want to solve the problem. We need to crash the housing market so that it's affordable again for young people. And, and, the, and the way inflation's gone, but we don't talk about that. We don't talk about American and Americans' problems. We're told that we have to worry about Israel and the Israeli people who have, been, who have kept these folks in an open-air prison for several decades and gun them down periodically. And if we don't care about them over our own needs, then we're anti-Semitic. And that's completely ridiculous because the, the loudest voices against Israel are Jewish voices. Dr. Norman Finkelstein, uh, Glenn Greenwald, Miko Paulette, And uh, these are the guys that are, that are speaking the loudest because they know, uh, you know, Zionism, is disgusting and it's what keeps the war machine going and it, it it's indoctrinated in the baptist church i mean which is absolutely ridiculous that the baptist church would be saying we have to protect israel at all costs when in reality if you want to break it down the muslim people are actually are are more appreciative of jesus than the jewish people are i mean you can watch videos nothing against jewish people but Jewish people don't associate with Jesus. So the whole concept is ridiculous. They use religion. They abuse religion. And, you know, like the old saying from the Guns N' Roses song, you know, most organized religions, they make a mockery of humanity. Our governments are dangerous and out of control. You know, they just, they're just designed to keep, to keep the war machine going. Man. It is crazy. Like I, the, the future is looking pretty grim over here. You know, they're trying to eliminate the middle class. They're yeah, absolutely. The class. They want poor and rich, and that's it. No middle class. Definitely, and you know, I'm a big believer in um, that the government should be helping the American people, and I really believe in putting Americans first over everything else, and. Our government is is consumed, and our politicians are owned by the special interests that represent foreign governments, and that those are the real gangsters. Those are the you know you can talk about uh, you know Johnny A Light or Sammy the Bull or our buddy Larry Matza or any of these guys, you know, from the life. And it's great to talk about. It's interesting topics. I mean, you know, I, I know that life very well. But the real gangsters, the real gangsters are Netanyahu, Zelensky. Those are the guys that we should study because they affect your daily life. They're the gangsters that own your politicians. They're you don't the gangsters think that they're that just the face? Politics. You don't think that they're just the face of it and there's other people pulling the strings behind the scenes? Well, I mean, to a certain degree, but, you know, Netanyahu is a criminal. Uh, he's not just a war criminal. He's a criminal. And there were there were protests throughout Israel to remove him. You know, he's an embezzler. And he's uh, he's uh, basically used this as a distraction. And committed mass murder as a distraction to keep himself in power. Yeah, there's there's people behind them that are within the political networks of these countries, and they're all the true gangsters, man. They're the true yeah. gangsters, and and war is the worst racket, you know. But the prison industrial complex too. I mean, the prison industrial complex is a huge racket too, man. Yeah, it, it, it's insane, insane. They put people in prison and. Uh, they, they don't care about helping people and wanting them to change and not go back. They want people to go back so that they can keep the market going. Definitely. The, the big three is the war racket, prison industrial complex, and big pharma. Those are the big three, and they own our politicians. And the, the average American is not going to get a fair shake. It's sad, man. And all these people are, all the illegal immigrants, I have nothing against immigrants because they, they should be, a, my grandmother was an immigrant, my great-grandmother. Sure. And 
They should be documented, though. You don't know who these people are coming well, into the country. It's even worse what's going on now at our border. Bobby Kennedy did a great, Bobby Kennedy Jr. did a great um, expose on this, where he went down to our border and he saw how the cartels are basically controlling our border and who comes into our border. And they're basically owning these people and, and sending them to certain cities. Because Biden, he surrendered the border to the cartels. I mean, if that's, yeah, the immigration issue is a whole, is a whole other issue. But it's just another example of how our politicians have, have sold us out. They keep saying that there's um, cells over here. There, there's terrorist cells in this country that. Oh yeah, no doubt. But you know, at the end of the day, so what do you do to stop it? What do you do? It's 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 only going to get worse now because of of what's going on in uh, in the Middle East, Israel and Gaza, and Israel committing all this genocide against these these people. I mean, it's just imagine if you. You've been in an open air prison. Your dad was and mom were in an open air prison for years. You had this occupier that was coming in, mowing the lawn, killing people. I mean, they've created these terrorists for years, and they're not bad people. I mean, I would I would be the same way if I if I were them. But now these people are displaced, and they're, we our politicians our politicians need to stand up, and they're not going to. They need to stand up and say, hey. We're not going to take a single one of these people. They need to send them all into Israel because Israel started this problem. I mean, I think they should dump them all into Israel, but that's not going to happen. Never. It's not, that would never happen. And then all these protests. It's insane. I've been in the middle of the protests in New York City. Yeah. And they're shutting shit down, man. Grand Central Station. I could not get on the train. There's people everywhere screaming and. Yeah. They got fake blood dumped on. Who knows? It could have been real blood, but it looked it looked real. But I don't know. But they have blood dumped all over themselves, screaming with bullhorns, and it was. Yeah. Just I crazy. mean, people. You know, I I never wanted to go to a protest. I don't like crowds and stuff. Uh, but people have a right to protest, and I can understand with everything that's going on, like why people protest. But to yeah. me, it, it I. You know, obviously, I, I'm 100, percent you know, full on free speech guy. I believe in, in in freedom of speech, and I think people have a right to protest. But to me, it doesn't really do anything, and uh, it, it's 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 better, much better to do what I'm doing right now, which is talking on your show and reaching a large audience and explaining to people what's really going on, than holding a sign and shouting, you know, at with a group of people, you know? Yeah, and there, there's a ton of them doing it out there. You should see it, man. I'm trying to find the video right now. Well, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, Stacks. I'm telling you, brother. But, you know, let's 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 kind of turn the switch gears a little bit because I'm going to be down at Larry's house on Tuesday and January 2nd. And... Uh, uh, you you've been talking to Richard Haas, the the world famous playwrights. Uh, have you had Richard on the show yet? No, no. I will yeah. in the future, though. Yeah, he's a wild guy, interesting dude for sure. He's uh, he's a renowned playwright, and uh, Larry's asked me to play the role of of him. That's loosely based on him from his book, The Life in the Soldier Laughs. Uh, I know you put up on your channel. I did a little a little quick read from the script. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know I know that when the show comes up north, you're gonna be playing the writer in this two man show and some some Broadway and off Broadway shows yourself. So surprise, we surprise, this. everybody. I didn't tell anybody about it. So surprise, surprise. I'm gonna be playing the writer. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do a show um, over at Larry's house on Tuesday, at Larry Monson's house on Tuesday. Uh, when I'm down there, we'll do a, another broadcast of your show. And then yesterday, I was hanging out. Um, I was out in um, Orlando for some business, and I I stopped and uh, was, was trying to meet up with Jason Reinhardt. 
but he got held up in an appointment and I wanted to miss the massive Orlando traffic. So I missed him, but I was over at Hooters by UCF. And man, you talk about some tomatoes. Oh my God. You know, just some real natural, young, natural beauties in that place. But what Jason and I will come on your show too. And, and Jason is supposed to play the writer down here. You're supposed to do it up north and he's down here. So this is, this is, uh, we should tell people the soldier laughs is written as a two man show. And it's kind of reminds me a little bit of the original Bronx tale, right? Yeah. Uh, which started out as a play jazz and, uh, the character that I play is loosely based on Larry. And then the character that you play is like the writer that I'm talking to. Yeah. It's like, it's like their first interactions together, right? How they were introduced and all this. And they just, they're trying to like explain each other's lives. Exactly. And you and I will talk more about that. Like when, um, when I'm down at Larry's house, um, but yeah, man, I just want to ask you, what do you think, you know, just wrapping up uh, about what we talked about here? Did you know, you know, a lot of this stuff already about the war racket and, and how this craziness works? Yeah, I, I know quite a bit about it. I've been trying to avoid a lot of it on social media because a lot of the images are really disturbing, man, on Instagram and it's like you'll be scrolling like, oh, shit, I don't want to see that. Like people will send it to me. And I'm just like, it's stuff you've never seen in your life, stuff that will instantly turn your stomach. And, and uh, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And I'll tell you, I'm a big believer in the U.S., you know, staying out of conflict and minding our own business. So you'd say, why are we talking about this? The reason I'm talking about it is because Israel was doing this with our money. If we were, were to cut them off, if we were to, to turn the faucet off and dry up the funds, this, this would end. But we don't, have a, we don't have the balls to do it. And Israel gets more money than the next four countries combined that we give you know, from the United States. They, so they get more money for Israel than the next four countries that we give money to. So the billions that we give them are how they're able to commit this this atrocity. And like I said, the whole thing with October 7th, I mean, it's been proven now that IDF, that they were killing their own citizens. They're, yeah, yeah they were yeah. using a tank and all this stuff. They have, yeah. and they have the most sophisticated uh, system in the world, right, where people can't just mm-hmm. go across the border and all this. It's impossible for them to, yeah, was, to do what they do. They stood down because it's... You know, it's it was definitely smells like a false flag. I mean, they stood down and uh, they wanted to wipe Gaza off the map, but it's awful. And I, my my tailor is Palestinian. You know, I had a two hour conversation with him um, about this, and he's a great guy. But I mean, how could you not become angry and militarized and a terrorist if you if you had to live under those conditions for so long? And I feel horrible for the people, but I don't want them to be coming here. You know, so it's, what's it's, the solution, Matt? What's the solution for this? I'll tell you what I would do. You know, my solution would be, and nobody would want to hear this, I would cut funding completely to Israel, <clears throat> stop all the settlements, and I would basically, since Israel leveled the majority of Gaza, I would completely end the state of Israel, just like it was created by the Balfour Declaration. And um, I would displace those people. I mean, that's what I would do. I don't, I don't believe in Zionism. I don't believe that, you know, I like Jewish people. But the other thing people don't understand is Judaism and Zionism have always been at odds. <clears throat> A true religious Orthodox Jews were against kicking people out of their homes and creating the state of Israel. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're asking me what I would do, it would never happen. And, and I would uh, I would disband and end the, the country of Israel completely. And I would and I would have the Gazans take it over, take over their land that they that they lost from the British double dealing, you know, going back to the start of World War One. But, you know, that, that ain't never going to happen. No. Do you do you think any of this has to do with um, religious beliefs? 
Do you think Period. a lot of this has to do with no religion? people? People claim that, and you know the people who who claim that uh, are propagandized because the true religious Jews are not Zionists. It's the secular. It's the secular Jews, and 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 the whole idea that Muslims hate us because. We, we drink scotch or go to the movies or whatever. It's complete bullshit. It, it a lot of Muslims, and, and I got yeah, love they're for great, them. They, they're great friends. We're that's, really good friends. I yeah, got no that's, problem that's, with Muslims. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, that's propaganda, and that, that's moronic yeah. propaganda. Um, that they're, they're great people. They just want to be left alone. They never wanted to get kicked out of their homes. They never wanted to get caught up in the, in the war racket. Uh, but you know, it's, uh, I, I think Iran, and, and some of my best friends, Kamal Shalarus, the Prince of Persia, who you should have on the show, who was, uh, I managed when he was at UFC, my old training partner, and, and one of my best friends, he could, he could tell you, you know, Iran, they're a proud people, they're nationalistic, they don't want to take over the world. Uh, I don't believe that they want to, I think that we create um, it goes back to propaganda going back to World War II. Like, look at when Pearl Harbor was bombed. Like, we there were all these, these paintings in America about the evil, slanty-eyed Japanese and all this propaganda. They bombed Pearl Harbor because we were starving them of gas and oil uh, because we didn't want them becoming an empire. They were showing signs that they wanted to become an empire. So we... we fucked with them with their oil supply and we were starving their oil supply that's why they bombed Pearl Harbor always follow the money it's all propaganda and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of Americans that are very uh, propagandized and um, hate Muslims uh, and a lot of times they don't even know if they're Muslims like it might even be like an Indian person or somebody like me when I had black hair before my hair turned gray that has a darker complexion. They'll look at you and they'll think you're like, I did the chic in pro wrestling. And all I had to do was turn up my mustache and my mustache put on my, uh, my chic, <laughs> you know, uh, and I went back and did it after, after this nonsense in the Middle East. There's a lot of people that are ignorant and they're propagandized uh, against the uh, Muslims, whoever it's going to be, like we have to have this enemy. When in reality, if you sit down and you talk to any people, whether it's Jewish people, Arab people, black people, uh, anybody, South American people, Filipino people, whoever it is, most people are cool. Most people are cool. But the real gangsters are in government. And they want to divide us. And that's that's really how war propaganda works and what I want to do on your show and any other venue I go on and talk about this stuff is just educate people on what's really going on and, and stop a lot of the ignorant propaganda that one religion is bad or the other is bad. This isn't about religion. It's about money. It all comes down to, it all comes down to the bet to the Benjamins. I find out on the I find on the internet a lot of people want you to pick sides. And I'm course, like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not on a side. I'm not picking a side. I have no side, I have no desire to pick a side. I'm, I'm for peace, you know. It's like that, you know, it's Larry Mazza has a great quote, which is that the word politics, poly is many, and ticks are blood sucking insects. And <laughs> They want to divide us because at the end of the day, they don't want you. Politicians don't want you to think about your own self-interest, uh, your own economic situation, your health care situation. Uh, they don't want you to think about that. They want you to, to feed you distractions. And like I said, they're, they've been bought and sold by foreign governments for years. And we don't uh, we've lost our sovereignty as Americans because of it. But yeah, most people all over the world are cool, man. I mean, dude, did my, my, my Taylor Palestinian dude is a fucking awesome guy, man. And, and we talked for like two hours. I heard his, it, the whole, it was awful what I learned about his family, man. And how 
people have been killed for years with this mowing of the lawn. I mean, it's disgusting what Israel does. But and they're able to to arrest children. I hear. Oh, they're able to kill children. I mean, God, what they did in the hospitals, you know, would be killing children with incubators, shutting off the incubators because they they thought that there were uh, terrorist cells in the bottom of the hospital, and it turned out that there weren't. But they killed a bunch of people in the hospital. It's disgusting. It's it, you, you know, it's war is disgusting. It's sickening, you know, to me. I've never bought into it. I've, I've always known it was a racket, and. You know, I have friends that went into the military and all that. I never wanted to. You know, I, I, I'd i rather support myself and my family. No, one, no one's going to fuck with my family. I'll fuck back harder than you ever imagined. You know, I'll do things to give your fucking nightmares nightmares. And I have. But I don't need to be part of some fucking army, of, uh, you know, um, some bullshit army, you know, for a corrupt government. Fuck that. You know? Yeah. It's, it's really sad what's going on, man. Hopefully they can uh, get it together because we're going to be the ones suffering with all these people coming into our country. They're taking over the resources for the, for the, for the veterans. They're kicking the veterans out of the mm -hmm. hotels and letting these people in. Yeah, absolutely. They don't care about, they don't care about our veterans. We don't take care of our veterans in this country. We don't take care of our people in this country. I mean, it's all about divide. It's, it's these, these bullshit names, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, that they, they're all they're all a bunch of scumbags. I guess they poly as many and ticks are blood sucking insects. <laughs> you know. You nailed that right on the head, man. Yeah, brother. But we got some cool stuff coming up ourselves, man. And I'm looking forward to getting up on the stage with you, man. And uh we're gonna we're gonna be uh actors. We're gonna be renowned actors here with the the uh Soldier laughs. You're damn right. People are gonna be shocked when they see this, man. It's a whole different, whole different aspect for me. You're used to this type of stuff, but I'm not. Well, I always say, like, if you give me a mic, you know, I'm, uh, I could entertain people. Whether it's stand-up comedy, MMA, pro wrestling, give me a mic, I'll entertain people. But when it comes to a script. That's a little bit different. And uh, a lot I'm, different. I'm having fun with this script, though, because there's so many laughs in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we'll have a blast with it, man. Yeah, I appreciate your time, Stax, man. We're going to have some fun. 2024 is going to be a good year. Really good. Italian Stallion, thank you so much for the $10 contribution. I really appreciate that. If anyone else wants to donate to the show, you can hit up the Cash App at Chatting with Stacks, or you can hit up Venmo, PayPal, Super Sticker, Super Chats, Zell, all that good stuff. I appreciate every single dollar. It helps. It goes a long way. We got to get you down to Florida in 2024, brother. Yeah, man. I'll be down there. Yeah, you come down and... Um, we'll hang out. We'll hang out at Larry's. It's a good place to go. And we'll hang out at Capone's, you know, down in Palm Beach. And that, that's yeah. that's where Larry wants to do the first show down here for the Shoulder Laughs, the first play, and record it is at Capone's in Palm Beach. Hey, I'll be down there, hundred percent. Yeah, we'll have a good time, brother. I appreciate you taking the time. You too, man. You too. I'm uh, sitting here sipping my shit of scotch. <laughs> yeah. and, and make sure everyone that's watching, go check out Hannibal TV. You got some good uh, interviews and things on there. Hannibal yeah, TV. Yeah. Shout out to Hannibal. Yeah, just Google King of CT, uh, YouTube or wherever, uh, or the Granimal, which was my fight nickname. So King of, King of Connecticut came about. Uh, off a karaoke challenge. A lot of people don't know that. There's actually a funny video that explains how I became the king of Connecticut. But I was always known as uh, the Granimal coming up from amateur wrestling, judo, grappling, MMA. And then when I got into, I got into pro wrestling, I was in pro wrestling for a while before I got king of Connecticut. This guy, Chuck Sloan, who was, who was a great, great actor too, man. He's been in some movies. Chuck Sloan, he challenged me um, to do karaoke. So King in Connecticut was like an Elvis thing. And then it just kind of stuck. 
And uh, <laughs> I got the pompadour though. Pompadour pompadour. Yeah, man. Your your uh your pompadour is looking pretty pretty smooth today, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I just just want you know my message with all this stuff is just in, in, love your family and enjoy your life, enjoy your holidays, but just understand that you know we're being worked, you know, by our government, and don't fall for this war propaganda bullshit. Definitely. And going into the new year, I hope everyone has a great new year. What are you doing for New Year's Eve, man? I'm laying low, man. I think I'm going to be doing some karaoke. Um, yeah, yeah you're going to be the king of Florida down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do karaoke at the Strum Bar that's in the Hilton uh, in Daytona. Like, right, I've been trying to get uh, Jason uh, Reinhardt to come out there. It's a fun place. And yeah, Jason, uh, great guy. Yeah, right. Stay right. I'm going to stay right in the hotel and we'll hang out there so I don't have to go anywhere. I like to stay in one place. Like I said, I don't like to get out on the roads. But if you do have a problem with the DUI or a personal injury, you can hit me up. My Facebook name and my Instagram name is Matthew Granamania King, G R A N A M I A K I N G. At or king.of.connecticut, all spelled out on Instagram. And uh, I just I'll, let me tell you a story. I just got this girl. You'll appreciate this story. Exotic dancer, right? It's a great example of how I can get you money if you're in an accident. She's a, she was an exotic dancer down here in Florida, a stripper. And uh, the bouncer was walking. He was holding a table. And um, he fell, and she was talking to a customer, hit her in that side of the head with the table, knocked her out, right? Wow. And so uh, she didn't remember anything. She just remembered, like, waking up the next day, right? So this yeah. happened This happened uh, back in the early part of the summertime, right? And so uh, I signed her on the case, but what I do is, especially with TBI, because I'm real knowledgeable on TBI. I ran a lot of cases for for UFC fighters. I got them into my friend, her into my friend's clinics where they do these cognitive tests that are very, very good, hold up in court. And they put her through all these cognitive tests. They had her keep a journal for months. And so, and to make a long story short, she just got her settlement this morning, $360,000. Damn. Anybody she'll, be, who, she'll be good for a while. She doesn't got to oh strip yeah. for any longer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, anybody who's involved. Now, that's she didn't have any spinal injuries. She didn't have any back injuries. She was banged up, but it was all brain trauma, all TBI. So if you've got brain issues from an accident, a lot of lawyers will just shuffle you through and you won't get get you'll get maybe maybe 50 grand. Right. But yeah. if you do it slow and you go through the process with the cognitive testing, and I'm very meticulous with my clients, you know, I can get you big money. So keep that in mind. And if you've been involved in, in a car accident, and you're injured in a car accident, anywhere in all 50 states, I can help you with our 10X Law program. And if you're here in Florida and you've had a DUI, hit me up. We can help you out. You don't want it. You don't want these things to ruin your life. And I put a link for your Facebook in the description of this video. So if you guys got any type of problem, hit them up and I'll get 30 percent. We'll, we'll say that. 30 percent. Yeah, we got to give the stacks man a cut for sure. I appreciate <laughs> you, man. You Thank too, you. brother. You too, man. It's been fun. And uh, I hope you have a safe time. Good night up there. It, it feels kind of like Connecticut, Florida today because it's cold. Um, it's it's pretty chilly down here, but it feels good though. Yeah, it was rainy and uh, shitty. It's been shitty the last three days up here. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we had a good discussion. Hopefully, your fans enjoyed it. Something different for the for the channel. Yeah, and uh, I got another interview dropping tonight. An interview I did with a P nine skinhead from um, California prison system. So you don't. Oh, yeah. miss that one's at nine o'clock. It's a pretty good interview. It's a lot of information in that one. Yeah, um, I always tell it. 
I always tell a story about when I was uh, when I was coaching for Copa Women May, and I had a uh, Richie Giambetta used to used to recruit from the uh, state Penn rather than than Penn State. <laughs> we, we had a we had one fighter who was a black gangbanger and both heavyweights, and another fighter who was had an Aryan Nation in our prison, and they ended up getting along and becoming friends. We went to the titty bar, and I, I, I was shocked because it was, <laughs> it was a black titty, black boob, booby bar. And uh, the um, Aryan Nation guy was getting lap dances from the black girls. He had a great time just hanging out, bullshitting with us. And, you know, you realize that the prison system, like we said, the prison industrial complex, they want to divide you. The government wants to divide you. Social media wants to divide you. These social media companies don't let it happen. Get along with people. Get to know people. Help people if you can. That's what life is all about. And don't fall for these scumbag propaganda from the government. Definitely. And uh, I really appreciate it, man. It's been a great conversation. And you guys go check out his links. The link for his cookbooks in the description. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. And if you guys like this content, Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. And if you don't like this content, go fuck yourself. Start your own podcast. And I'll man. tell you, I'll tell you, Stacks, man. I want to, I want to end it with this joke. I did it last time, and some people might not have heard this joke. What's two hundred and thirty pounds, dashingly handsome, and disappears in an instant? The grandma. Stay tuned. Don't miss tonight's show. It's going to be a really good one. See you guys soon.